Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are here to set up our budget for the month of September. And I'm doing things a little bit differently this time around. I am gonna set up my monthly view with you guys so you can kind of get an idea of what that all looks like. So to start it off, I'm just gonna put in our paydays. And I've got these little payday stickers from Planner Kate. So this is sheet S563. And I'm just gonna use these purple ones. And I just put my paydays in. Um, just to track those. So my paydays are gonna be on the 13th and on the 27th. We'll put that in first. And then the next thing we're gonna do is put in these little piggy banks where I'm gonna be taking out our sinking fund money. So these are from Honey Inked on Etsy, and we take out our sinking funds on the second paycheck of the month and on the fourth paycheck of the month. And then on the first paycheck of the month and the third paycheck of the month, we take out our uh, cash envelopes. So that, that takes care of that portion of it. And then the next thing we'll do is we'll put in our bill due stickers. Um, I just have these sheets from Planner Kate. This is S746. And we're gonna go through and put all of our um, bills in and everything like that. So I know that we have, let's see, and I might have to refer back to my August one a little bit. So the first bill we have is due on the 6th and it's I, iCloud. So we'll put that in first. And I just kind of picked the color um, sticker of whatever the month color is for Erin Condren. So for September, it's been traditionally purple. So that's what I put in. So that is for um, iCloud. And I don't put the amount in until it's actually paid. Just in case for some reason, like the bill goes up randomly or whatever it may be. And then the next thing is gonna be Southwest Gas. And that's usually due around the 12th of the month. Sometimes it's a day later or a day earlier. It just depends, but I just put it on the 12th and then if I have to move it, I will. So it's Southwest Gas. Okay, and then we have, let's see. I actually have my whole list of bills right here. So I'll just take that out. Okay, so then the next thing is CenturyLink, and I think CenturyLink yeah, is doing the 13th. Okay, sorry, I have to keep flipping back and forth, you guys. Okay, so CenturyLink, CenturyLink, okay. And that's gonna be due on the 12th, or no, I'm sorry, the 13th. So that'd be kind of fun to just kind of go through this process with you guys. I normally don't, but I was kind of feeling like it today. So if you hear a, like a weird sound in the background, my husband is steaming the floors and I, I know my camera tends to pick up sound really easily. So I don't know if you guys can hear it or not, but if you can, that's what that is. Okay, so there's Apple Music and then we have pre-K tuition due on the 15th. So I will put that down on the 15th. And once I get these all laid down, I'll kind of explain um, paycheck to paycheck budgeting to you guys. So let's see. And then we've got, oh, we've got State Farm as well, which is life insurance, and that's due on the 15th. State Farm. Put that in. And then we have um, Wells Fargo, which is student loans. And that is due on the 17th. Okay, 
and we've got Great Lakes. which is student loans. That's due on the 20th. Banner life insurance. I feel like we have a lot of bills. Like sometimes I watch, sometimes, I all the time, I <laughs> watch other YouTubers um, and their budget videos and stuff and I feel like they like don't have hardly any bills. I'm like, how do you do that? Like we have so many and some of them like once debt's paid off like those will be two less bills once my daughter's not in pre-k anymore that'll be one less bill but I feel like we have like so many for some reason um okay and then we've got T-Mobile which is due on the 25th T-Mobile And we have our HOA, which is also due on the 25th. HOA dues. And then we have APS, which is also due on the 25th. Um, so put that there. Okay. And then we've got Hulu, which is due on the 26th. Hulu. And then we have Duncan and our mortgage. So do mortgage and Duncan. And that will be on the 1st of October. And we do pay those bills from our September income, even though they're technically not due until October 1st. I will explain that in just a second. Okay, so we have all our bills in. And what I love about doing this in this spread is that I can really see since we do a uh, budget paycheck to paycheck, our month for our monthly budget doesn't start on the 1st and end on the 30th for September. It starts when the first paycheck of the month hits, which is September 6th. And it ends when the first paycheck of the next month hits. So that'll be October 4th. So technically this month's budget will run from September 6th through October 3rd. And we're paid on a weekly basis. My husband's paid every other week and I'm paid every other week. But our paycheck schedules um, um, are opposite each other, I guess. I, I always like struggle with figuring out how to explain that. but. So he's paid on the 6th, I'm paid on the 13th, he's paid on the 20th, I'm paid on the 27th. So like for this first week, for example, that'll be the 6th through the 12th, and you can see, okay, we've got iCloud coming out of this paycheck, and we have Southwest Gas coming out of this paycheck. For the 13th, we've got sinking funds to take out, and then we've got CenturyLink, Apple Music, State Farm, Pre-K Tuition, Wells Fargo, and that's about it for bills and so on and so forth. So that's how paycheck to paycheck budgeting works for us. And I personally love doing it that way um, because I feel like it gives me kind of like that zoomed in lens on exactly like where our money is going and everything like that. So, um, so that's it for this page. Oh, and you know what? I did want to put Safeco in because I need to remember to pay it. So we pay our um, auto insurance quarterly, and that bill is gonna be coming up this month, and it's due on the 15th. So I'm gonna put that in, because I'm gonna have to deposit our um, sinking fund money. So Safeco will be on the 30th, or on the 15th. I swear, pregnancy brain is killing me these days, you guys. Okay. And then we can take this off. And then on the 1st of September, I will update our debt balances over here and everything like that. So 
I've gotten a lot of questions about like where we're at in our, our debt-free journey. We are currently um, in stork mode because I'm 35 weeks pregnant and we need to get through maternity leave, pay for medical bills, get things for the baby, all sorts of stuff like that. So we are currently just putting minimum payments towards our debts. Um, as far as what we currently owe, I am still tracking it even though we're putting just minimum payments because it's still helping. So this is where all of our um, debt balances are at currently. So we owe just under $12,000 as of August 1st. And then obviously that amount will go down a little bit in September because of our minimum payments. So I'll be updating those balances soon. My husband and I are both very antsy <laughs> to get back to paying off debt because we are just ready to be done. Like we're so close to being done that we are just ready. And we've even talked about like, you know, evaluating once I get through maternity leave, where we're at with like our savings and our sinking funds and potentially putting like a giant chunk to debt at the start of the year, um, just to like, we wanna get it paid off within the first few months of the year, honestly, like between tax returns, um, cleaning out some of our sinking funds possibly, um, and then our savings and stuff, like we, I'm pretty sure we can make it happen, but anyways, we're still very much so on our minds, basically, is what I'm trying to say. Okay, so let's get started with the actual budget. So I am going to set up our weekly check-in page here, and I'm gonna take out this um, paper clip because it's kind of messing me up a little bit. And what is bumping over here? Mm, okay, and then maybe take out this key too. Okay, so I'm gonna put, All right, so I'm going to put the weekly check-in page here and our monthly budget right here. And to set everything up, I'll be using Sarah Marie stickers. I just went through my haul recently, but um, I think in a video like a week or two weeks ago by the time you guys are seeing this. So I love, love, love using her stickers for budgeting. They are by far my favorite. Um, and we're going to be using some thick washi. We're going to use the September budget. Um, and the weekly check-in page, and that'll be it. So let's go ahead and just set up the weekly check-in page real quick. I'll set the rest of these off to the side. And we'll just start out by putting our washi down. We've got four weeks to track for, um, for September. Okay, and then we'll put our first washi strip down. I'm in love with these September budget kits from Sarah. Like they are just so pretty. And September is my birthday month and um, purple is my favorite color <laughs> as it happens. So I really love this. Oh, and I have the wrong script sticker. Whoopsie daisy. Well, you know what I'll do real quick is I will, just so I don't like mess this up, I'll go ahead and put this washi over here while we're at it. And then I'll put the first washi strip over here. Because laying this big script sticker down back down on the sheet I probably wouldn't line it up right and I just don't want to mess with it too much so we'll just put the September budget right there and then I will do the weekly check-in right here Okay, so weekly check-in. And as far as categories that we actually track, um, we track grocery pickup, gasoline, Dunkin', and unbudgeted. That's what we track in this for this weekly check-in page. I have two. <laughs> two weekly check-in pages that I use. Um, one for debit transactions, one for cash transactions. So one, two, three, four. I 
I love using these kits because it makes it just such a quick process and it looks like super clean and super cute. So I've been loving it. I can't imagine not using stickers now. I used to not use stickers. Um, or as many stickers, I guess you could say. But I love these fudget kits. So there's one, two. And then we got, I feel like I put that down crooked, really crooked. Let's kind of adjust that a little. There we go. And one, two, three, four. Okay. And then on the bottom, I forgot to grab my thin washi. Let's see. Put some thin washi down. I think I'll use this one. I got one, two, three, four. And that'll just close it off. Okay. And then I'll put these little weekly script stickers. So we got week one. And week two. Week three. And week four. Okay, and then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna draw our lines out. So, Okay, so we got our little lines in to kind of separate everything. So for our categories, we've got grocery pickup. We have gasoline. We have Duncan and unbudgeted. So those will be the categories that we're tracking here. So that page is all set to go. And then let's go ahead and start setting up our September budget. So let me kind of get myself situated over here. So as far as our income is concerned for the month of September, we're gonna be tracking our main source of income, which is my salary and my husband's um, pay as well. And then variable expenses or variable income, which basically comes from YouTube uh, and affiliate links and things like that. And then we also got miscellaneous because we have been kind of selling things and all that. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in our income strip. And then we'll go ahead and draw our lines. Then let's go ahead and put some washi in. And I think I'm gonna do these little flowers here. 
and we'll start with our fixed expenses on this side. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this right here. That'll tell me where to put our washi strip. Try to just center it. Okay. And then we'll put our variable expenses right next to the fixed. All right, there we go. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna count out my lines and then um, put the totals in and draw the lines. I think that will kind of help me keep things looking a little cleaner. Okay, so I've got that all set up and ready to go with the lines. My lines are turning out like really crooked and weird. I don't know if it's the ruler or what, but I'm gonna try to not let it bug me too much. <laughs> okay, and then I'm gonna put down some thin washi at the very bottom here. And I'm gonna layer the potential savings and everything like right on top of it. So we'll put that down and then we'll do our potential savings. Okay, so that is all set and ready to go. So finally, let's go ahead and put our amounts in and all that kind of stuff. So for main income, we are expecting to bring in a minimum of $5,368. And for variable income, I'm expecting to bring in $625. And then we have zero budgeted for miscellaneous. So our total expected income is gonna be $5,993. Okay, and then for fixed expenses, I'm gonna list them all out and then I'll write the amounts in. So we've got our mortgage, we have iCloud storage, we have Southwest gas, we have CenturyLink, Apple Music, State Farm, which is our life insurance, and CenturyLink is our internet provider. And then we've got our pre-K tuition, Wells Fargo, which is one of our minimum student loan payments, Great Lakes, which is another minimum student loan payment. Banner Life Insurance, T-Mobile, which is our cell phone company, our HOA dues, APS Electricity, and then Hulu, and our Duncan app. Okay, and then as far as amounts are concerned, for our mortgage, we are expecting, for a mortgage, we pay $1,181.69. For iCloud, we pay $10.35. Southwest Gas is $32. CenturyLink is $65. Apple Music is $5.43. State Farm is $38.70. Pre-K tuition is $289 for the month. 
Wells Fargo is $136.78. Great Lakes is $257.24. Banner Life Insurance is $22.22. T-Mobile is $175.78. And then HOA dues are $104. APS is $174.52. Hulu is $1302. And then we're doing $25 for Duncan. And so our total fixed expenses are $2,530.73. So those are our fixed expenses. Now for variable, just to make sure I can write straight, <laughs> um, for variable, we've got grocery, We have household, we have eating out, which is different, and I'll explain that in a second. We have miscellaneous, commissions, which is the money my daughter can earn for doing extra chores around the house, pocket money, for both myself and my husband. We have grocery pickup. And then we have gasoline, water and trash. Our sinking funds, my business expenses, taxes, and unbudgeted. Okay. So those are our variable expenses. And now as far as the amounts are concerned, for grocery, we're gonna do uh, $400. I'm gonna leave out the dollar sign because it looks too squished with it. <laughs> and then for household, we're gonna do 100. Eating out is gonna be 160. Miscellaneous is gonna be 50. Commissions will be 20. Pocket money will be 160. So $80 each for my husband and I. Grocery pickup will be 160, basically $40 per week. Gas will be 300. Water and trash will be 100. Our sinking funds will be 1250. And then I'm gonna budget 150 for business expenses. I'm also gonna budget 150 for taxes. And unbudgeted will be zero. Now, there are definitely some changes that have taken place in this budget. So we have an eating out category now because we are using this full grocery amount for our monthly grocery hauls. The $400 is meant to cover all of our groceries for the month, except for produce. So that's where grocery pickup comes in. So for grocery pickup, we're giving ourselves $40 per week for produce. And then if we happen to run out of eggs, milk, bread, things like that. So um, those will be our groceries. And then we separated eating out simply because, you know, we're pretty much planning on spending that full $400 for our monthly grocery bill. So we're giving ourselves $40 per week for eating out. And there's four weeks in the month. And the way that I like kind of figure that out by the way, so 
Our eating out days are Thursdays. So as you can see, there's one, two, three, four Thursdays in the month. So I just simply multiply 40 by four. Same thing with grocery pickup. We give ourselves $40 per month and we always do grocery pickup on Saturday. So we got one, two, three, four. So that's where I get those numbers. If there's a fifth week or a fifth Thursday, fifth Saturday, then I'll give ourselves like, you know, an extra $40. So that is how that works. Um, now, as far as potential savings is concerned, let me put our total in here. So our total is gonna be $3,000. And our total potential savings is gonna be $462 and 27 cents. All right, so that you guys is our September budget. Um, everything's laid out, ready to go. We've got our weekly check-in page all set up and ready to go as well. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to catch all my future videos. If you have any questions or comments at all, definitely let me know in the comment section down below. And let me know what is your goal for the month of September with your family's finances or your budget. Definitely would love to support you in reaching your goals and everything like that and give you some encouragement. So let me know what you guys are working on and I will chat with y'all later. Bye.